last sermon of the year. You're saying, yay! We're probably starting over again next year. So. Last sermon of the year. And of course, our message is a continuing continuation of the story we've been looking at in Luke chapter 2. And of course, it's, it's the account or the story of the birth of Jesus Christ. And so, of course, the last message, some of you were not here, uh, uh, Monday night on our Christ Christmas Eve uh, uh, celebration, we talked about how, as Christians, in celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, that we are to emulate Christ as our Savior, because that's how you celebrate the birth of someone that's important. You try to do what they have done, and Jesus Christ, of course, showed his love, his humility, and his sacrifice, and I hope you pray that that's exactly what we did for the Christmas season. So if you have your Bibles with you now, open your Bibles to Luke chapter 2, verses 22 to 24. This is what it says. Then it was time for their purification offering as required by the law. Well, let, let me start with verse 21. Eight days after Jesus was born, he, the baby was circumcised. He was named Jesus the name given him by the angel even before he was conceived. Then it was time for the purification offering as required by the law of Moses after the birth of a child. So his parents took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. The law of the Lord says, if a woman's first child is a boy, he must be dedicated to the Lord. So they offered the sacrifice required in the law of the Lord either a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Before we get to the word, let me just ask this question to each one of us. Do you remember or what is it that you first remember that was entrusted to you and you were given a responsibility to or for that seemed too big and seemed too important? Anything that you're reminded of? Like, like the most important responsibility you have ever received. Maybe when you were 12, you were told to watch the cookies and say, don't touch it. <laughs> that was a big responsibility, right? <laughs> because you're not allowed to touch it. But, but, but do you remember that responsibility when you first gave it? Well, for me, I think that the, the, the most, uh, uh, well, not, not so recent, it was uh, will be 27 years ago next uh, next week, was when my first uh, child was born. Uh, I, we asked for God for years to, to have a child. And uh, we thought we would not have one, but then six years later, God finally granted that uh, prayer. And then our first child was born. And I, and, and I remember uh, being so excited the first time I had to hold that baby. Uh, George just had that experience <coughs> this past week, uh, hold for the first time his uh, first uh, granddaughter. Uh, but but I, I remember 27 years ago hold, holding that tiny little baby, and my heart was filled with fear. And trembling, like, gosh, like, what a beautiful baby. <coughs> This child, I am responsible for this child. You, you remember that feeling? Uh, all of us uh, parents would remember that feeling, that, that you're holding that baby in your hand and you're going like, I'm responsible for this baby. All right? The, 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 the feeling of being entrusted with someone. It's not just something. The feeling of being entrusted with someone, a human life. It's a great feeling. It's a fearful feeling, scary feeling. But it's a great feeling because you are being entrusted with life, with life. Well, you know, that's kind of like what happens here in chapter 21 to the following that we read, that 
Mary and Joseph, of course, the time that they were told that they were entrusted with the baby was when Mary was told that she is going to get pregnant or be pregnant by the Holy Spirit. And then Joseph later on was told that you're going to take Mary to be your wife. And of course, he will be the father to this child. And uh, they're going to take care of this child. But can you imagine, again, the feeling of responsibility and even the fear? It's like, wow, I'm going to be the father of the God who took on the form of man. Can you imagine that responsibility upon, upon a Joseph? I mean, I was the father of a child who is just a human being, not part God. And yet I, I had that feeling of fear and I was trembling and I was saying, well, what am I going to do? I have to make sure that this child grow right and correctly and, you know, everything. You, know, you make all these promises in your heart and talk to this child and say, this is what you're going to be. This is what I'm going to do for you. This is what I'm going to teach you. You, you remember that? You remember that? And then they grow up. And then they grow up. <laughs> Let's not talk about that. Let's talk about <laughs> <laughs> the baby first here. But, but imagine Joseph. Imagine Joseph. After the baby, after the baby was born. And you know what? Joseph probably could have also said, well, he's God. I probably don't have to worry. He could probably feed himself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he wouldn't die even if I don't feed him. But, but, but no, no, no. Or maybe, or maybe uh, even though he's the first child of Mary. Maybe we don't have to go through all the, the rituals and everything that the law requires, right? Because maybe he's exempted from all these. But no, that wasn't it for Joseph and Mary. For Joseph and Mary, they took this very responsibly. For it was a very, very important responsibility given to them. Being the parents <coughs> of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who took on the form of man. See, for us, it's not that we will ever become like Mary and Joseph. No, we will never be like Mary and Joseph. Be entrusted with a God child. But we are entrusted by God with something very important also. Not exactly like Mary and Joseph, but each person is entrusted something important. Each one of us. Is it your child? Actually, that would be one of them. But actually, the first thing that God entrusted to us is our very life. God be being given a life on earth is a trust. <laughs> We have to take it that way. To be given the privilege to live a life on earth is a gift from God that He is entrusting to us. And the first thing we have to think about is how could I be responsible for this life that I now have? Especially as we are looking now again to another year that God is going to entrust to us. 2019. The first question we need to ask ourselves, realizing and knowing that God is trusting me with life and, Lord willing, He's trusting me with another year. question is, am I going to be responsible? Am I going to be responsible? Because it goes to that issue of responsibility. God is trusting us because He wants us to be responsible. So turn to the person sitting next to you and say, Be responsible. One of the problems we have here in our society now is that no one wants to take responsibility. Isn't that true? Whatever happens to me, it's the fault of someone. That is why there are children who are suing their parents. Oh, gave you an idea, huh? No, don't do it. <laughs> there are children who are suing their parents. 
Do you remember that 33-year-old son who was living in his parents' basement and the parents finally decided, no, you can't live in our basement anymore. You have to be in your home. You know what he did? He got a lawyer and sued his parents. <laughs> No one wants to take responsibility. Whatever they, whatever, anything bad that's happening to me, it's the fault of someone else. It's someone else's fault. It's the government's fault. It's my parents' fault. It's the fault of my neighbor. It's the fault of my teacher. It's the fault of someone else but me. <coughs> See, we have been entrusted by something important. The, ver the very first thing God has entrusted to us is our life, and we are to be responsible. We are to be diligent. And in being responsible for certain things that God has entrusted to us, one of the things that God has given to us so that we can take responsibility is by following His laws and His commands. If you want to take responsibility for what God has given to you, you look at what are the laws and commands that God has given for me to be responsible in whatever it is that He has given to me. That's exactly what Mary and Joseph did. Now that we are parents of this child, what's the first thing we must do? Well, after eight days, he had to be circumcised. And so they had him circumcised. That's a parent's responsibility. After 40 days, because that's the day of purification for a woman after giving birth to a son. For a, uh, if, 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 she was, if she had given birth to a, to a girl, she would have waited 80 days. I don't know why it's longer to be purified with a baby girl than with a baby boy. You go figure, I won't give you my opinion. <laughs> I just don't know. 40 days purification for a boy and 80 days purification for a girl, okay? But anyway, so, so after 40 days, actually on the 41st day is when they went to the temple to offer the sacrifice because the days of purification were over for Mary. And so that's part, again, of the responsibility. Now that we are parents of this child, what's the next thing? Okay, he, we got him circumcised. What else does the law say? The law says we're to go to the temple to offer a sacrifice after your purification. So they wait, waited 40 days. On the 41st day, they went to the temple and they offered what was required of the law. You see, the best thing to do when you are thinking of how can I be responsible with the life God has given to me is to look at the laws of God and His commands and say, what does God require of me? What does God want me to do so that I can live this life right? And you know what? God has given it to us in His Word. That if we will simply follow it, it will be good for all of us. Of course, our tendency is to think that, no, I can do this. It's just like how many times did I buy a toy for my child and try to put it all together by myself without looking at the instructions. Looking at the instructions. Remember that? That. And then you can't figure out this piece. And then your wife says, didn't it come with instructions? <laughs> right? And said, ah, oh, yeah, but I don't need it. I'm a man. I don't need instructions. Just like I don't need a map, right? <laughs> and then you look at the instruction and say, oh, that's where that goes. <coughs> right? Instruction is right here. He's given it to us. If we want to take responsibility for the life he has given us, follow the instruction. Now, the bad news is this. No matter how hard we try to follow the instructions, we still fail. Isn't that true? The good news is this. In the instructions, it says, I know you will fail. That's why the instruction book says, I have given you grace. 
for all the commands that you have failed to obey. Someone has been punished for it. And that is Jesus Christ. But you know what? Many people don't know that. That's why many people look at God as a hard school master who requires so much. And, yet, and then when you fail, he will send you to hell. They do not know that part of the instruction book is the message of grace from God. Knowing that we will fail and yet has given us grace. But part of our responsibility is getting to know the message of God's grace for us. Because in anything, if we want to be responsible, we must be diligent. Not only in obeying the laws and the commands, but in finding out what it is that God has for us. Now, another thing that we have to understand now is not only are we given responsibility for our life, God also has given us responsibility to help others with their lives, especially their eternal lives. The most important thing now that God has entrusted to us is the message of this instruction book. We are to tell others about it. You know why? Because their eternity depends on it. Their eternity depends on it. We do have to understand that every person we love on earth, every person we love on earth who is not in Christ, will spend eternity in hell. Will we just sit and say, let them? No. Remember, we have been entrusted a very important message. And we must be responsible for that message. We must take responsibility to tell our loved ones the very important message of the gospel. And that important message of the gospel is for them to know that God loves them so much, God sent His only Son to die on the cross for them, and that they can spend eternity in, hell if they, in heaven if they will surrender their lives to Jesus Christ. That is our responsibility. The responsibility to share the gospel to them. Now another part of this story, of course, that we read, is not just about being entrusted with something important, but being entrusted to someone. And that's us, again. We have to see ourselves as not just people who were trusted, who were entrusted with something, but we are people who are also entrusted to someone. And our model for this is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who is God, came to earth as a baby. Imagine all the risk he had to take. They have to pick the right couple. Who will be responsible? Mary and Joseph, remember? He's a baby. He had to be taken care of in the womb. He had to be taken care of after birth. He had to be taken care of until he's an adult. Can you imagine the risk that Jesus took? I'm picturing in my mind the conversation between the Father and the Eternal Son before He took on the form of man. And the Father said, hey, you're, you're going to be a man and you're going to die. I said, oh, no problem. But you know what? Your entrance to the earth, you're going to have to be a baby. I said, what? Are you really going to trust me with those humans? 
I know that was not off the conversation. <laughs> I, but I'm just picturing it. It's like this is your this is how your entrance is going to be, a baby, a baby. What if Joseph and Mary fail? But imagine the humility that Jesus Christ took to allow himself to enter the world as a baby, dependent on his parents, but at the same time still God, because he is God from the very beginning. The humility involved just to get the task accomplished. You see, to get the task accomplished here on earth, God has given us authorities. There's the government, there's the family, there's the church. And God wants us to humble ourselves by surrendering, by submitting ourselves to these authorities that he has given to us to accomplish his mission. Until we learn to entrust ourselves to someone or to trust someone in their leadership so that the work of making disciples of, the, of, of all the nations will be accomplished, we will never take part in this work that God has given to us. We have to see ourselves just like Jesus Christ, that part of the accomplishment of the purpose and mission of Christ is by each one of us making a decision to humble ourselves and entrust ourselves into the leadership of another, especially the leadership of Jesus Christ. Remember again, the most important thing entrusted to us is the gospel. If what it will take for the gospel to be preached is for me to submit myself to the will of God, that's what I will do. <clears throat> that's what we must do. Because if we don't, it will never be accomplished. But remember, God is trusting us that we will entrust ourselves. You are entrusted with, and you are entrusted to. That's our situation and our condition as creatures of God, as people saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. We have a responsibility. This coming year, this coming year, let us cherish what God has entrusted to us and let us entrust ourselves to the will of God so that his mission may be accomplished.